will learn is in this unit on dance we will now focus on historical evolution of indian dance we will study the factors that influence the dance styles of india and the role of dance in the conservation of indian culture dance is one of the most popular artistic discipline and virtually found in every human society it's not only a way of entertainment but also a process through which people express themselves as they move their body with rhythm or music and synchronize their motion with others from time immemorial dance has gone hand in hand with ancient ceremonies spiritual and social gatherings since the earliest moments of mankind dance has permeated into our essence dance undeniably has been one of the most eloquent ways of communication that we humans are familiar with so learners now let us understand the historical evolution of dance with reference to india the history of indian classical dance extends from the earliest days of the civilization to the present day india's prehistory and proto history also provide sufficient evidence of this fact in fact we have examples of a dancing girl from mohenjodaro and the remains of the harappan period also suggest various dance poses therefore we can conclude that from the earliest civilization dance as a social activity has been associated with all moments of the cycle of life roughly speaking we can trace the history of dance into three main time divisions the first time division is the early period comprising of the evidence found in the cave paintings and carvings the evidence of harappan civilization and the literary evidences which we had from the vedas the upanishads the brahmanas and the epics in this context the role of hindu gods is of immense importance in hindu mythology dance is believed to have been conceived by brahma brahma inspired the sage bharat muni to write the natya shastra a work on performing art which is a codified practice of dance and drama the best known hindu gods such as shiva kali and lord krishna are typically represented through various dance forms in various types of performing activity such as painting and sculpture now in this the role of lord shiva is of immense importance according to the vedic text and the ancient literature available an evening dance in the himalayas with a divine chorus is described in the shiv pradosh stotra the second well known dance of shiva is called tandava and belongs to his tamasic aspect as bhairava or vidharva it is performed in cemeteries and burning grounds where shiva usually tamed arm form dance widely with devi accompanied by his devotees representation of this dance are common among ancient scriptures such as those of elora elephanta and various parts of the country the tandava dance in its origin is that of pre aryan divinity where half god and half demon concept is focused who holds the dance performance in midnight in a burning ground in later times this dance in the cremation ground is interpreted as shiva and shakti in the literature and is widely popular across india we also have the nadita dance of natraj before the assembly sabha in the golden hall of chidambaram the center of universe this dance was first revealed to gods and rishis in the form of a dancing shiva we find various images especially the copper images of shri natraj in the southern india so we find that as far as the vedic culture is concerned 
we find a connection between the Ashwamedha and the other sacrifices and the Yagnas whenever they were performed there was some sort of a specified sacred dance. The Yajurvedas and the Brahmanas speak of Mahavrata dance and a special and an elaborate performance in connection with the Stotras after the Rajya Surya or other Yagyas. Hindu mythology is full of tales of gods and goddesses. In Hindu uh, religion, God manifests himself in many forms, creating diversity and at the time they emphasize on oneness with this divinity. Therefore, we find that through paintings and sculpture, many gods and goddesses are represented as the performers and manifestations of dance. Therefore, Lord Krishna, the incarnation of Vishnu is represented as Natvari in the dance form, while Lord Shiva is represented as Nataraj and is symbolized as the king of dancers. So, these are some of the earlier evidences available as far as the Hindu religion is concerned related to dance forms of India. The second time period is from 2nd century BC to 9th century AD. This includes the evidences available from Buddhist stupas such as those of Bhairu, Sanchi, Bhaja, Amravati and Nagarjun Konda at caves of Ellora and temples in different parts of India from Kashmir to Orissa, especially the early Gupta temples and those in the Bhuvneshwar region. And the third time period is related to 10th or 11th century to 18th century AD. This period includes early medieval and late medieval monuments. While there are no not many records available of prehistoric period, but in the second period and the third period, we find that lot of evidences are available. Sanskrit exercised outstanding influence on the intellectual and artistic life of people and its lit rich literature is manifested in the all round development of the dance forms in the country. So, we find in the Middle Ages a period of unity and amalgamation with the emergence of some regional styles. After understanding the time period for the dance, let us now move to the archaeological and literary evidences. It was in the second period that we have various evidences of evolution of Indian dance. The motives in the scriptural tradition were those of tree and woman, yaksh and the yakshigani and then we had the dance styles of Lord Shiva and Krishna. In Bharut, Sachi, Mathura and elsewhere there are innumerable Yaksha and Yakshigani who stand against tree and pillars, hold branches and they are seen in the dance pose. This was also a period of the emergence of sculpture figure of gods and goddesses especially Shiva, Durga, Saraswati and Ganesha. Each had a dance aspect and it was popularly called the Nritya Murti. From the scriptural evidence of the second period, we realize that dance must have been central to the culture of the people who were inspired to work on it. In the second period also, there was a lot of construction of stupas and temples. Different aspects of life have been depicted on the railings and gates of stupas and on, on the walls of the temple. Among this, there are motifs of dancer, the dance recital, as well as the dancing aspect of God and goddesses. The temples of Bhuvneshwar and the stupas of Ratnagiri tell us about the various images of the dance which were depicted by the leading sculpture artist at that time. The temples of Raja Rani, of Pasu Ravan, of Lingaraj, in Orissa all reverberate with music and dance. In removable figures with trees and pillars holding birds standing on animals are depicted in panel after panel on the outer walls of these temples. Looked at it closely, once we look at it closely we find that this were the popular dance forms and basic positions and fundamental movements which are described in Natya Shastra 
are depicted there. The monuments of central India, especially those of Khajuraho, built by Chandelas and Parmars belonging to the 11th and the 12th century, also present a number of movement patterns from soul standing figures to figures in groups and number of dance postures which leave a staggering impression on the popularity of classical dances. The painters and the sculptures have recorded through line and color about such activities. This tradition continued in miniature paintings also. Some of them were inspired by Buddhist texts and others by Jain themes and or Hindu Puranic myths and legends. So we find evidence of dancing in mural paintings ranging from the famous dance scenes of Bagha caves to Ajanta and Elora. After understanding the archaeological evidence, let us move to the literary evidences. The impression of a pervasive popularity of the dance motif is further reinforced by the evidence available in Sanskrit literature of the classical period. In the epics Ramayana and the Mahabharata, many dance performances are prescribed. In the works of poet Bhasa, Kalidas and others, until the time of Harsha, we encounter many description of dances and dance recitals. So we understand and we can gather from all these evidences that both dancers and dramatists were equally well versed in the various techniques of dancing. Nritya during 4th century AD during the time of Chandragupta II also uh, was very popular. He had assumed the title of Vikramaditya and during his reign considerable progress was made for the development of fine arts such as music, dance and painting. Emperor Samudragupta had established a strong and a stable kingdom and due to the advancement made by the society in the various spheres of life, Gupta period has been referred as a golden period of Indian history. During Gupta period, Indian music and dance crossed the frontiers and became popular in foreign countries also. From the ideals and paintings of this age, it can be summarized that the artist of this period had elevated dance to a form of devotion and they had beautifully conveyed the sentiments in a presentable manner. The great poet and playwright Kalidas belonged to this period and his plays proved that drama, dance and music were evolved and established in their classical form. Dances were developed through plays and various famous dancers such as Malvika and Urvashi are such whose references are found in the text. They appreciated the aesthetic beauty and drew upon this art to structure their play. So we find that during this time, uh, though drama was also conceived as an independent activity, but it was very much related with the dance styles. The various writings indicate that through gestures, costumes, decor, the dance was elevated to more refined forms and the inner state of being was reflected with various expressions. This tradition was established in India in different parts. We also find evidences of the codification of communication techniques in the first work on dramatology that is the Natya Shastra. This tradition continued in the plays of uh, Bhavuti and Harsha and it culminates into further works and we have various uh, such examples of dramatic work of 10th century AD. One such work is Karpur Manjari, it is an example of how through dramatic forms we utilize our emotions, our hand movements and integrated dance and music. It was also, it's also clear that music also played a very important role and it matured and developed during this time period. So the commentaries which are written by Abhinav Gupta during these times uh, during also indicate that there was a new phase which led to the evolution of different theories of aesthetic and artistic creation. 
After the Gupta period, the next time period is dance during Rajput period. Rajput period extended from 687 AD to 1000 AD. During this period, art forms were not practiced by masses, but it became a profession by personal choice. We find that uh, according to the experts of this time period, that the artists started confining the skills to limited number of uh, people and it was not a mass activity. However, the Rajput kings at those times loved music and also patronized dance. So, new forms of dance emerged which were regional in nature. Women used to participate in social festivals and dance during this time. The studies of these uh, ancient texts uh, indicate that there was a regional variations as far as the basic principle of Natya Shastra tradition is concerned and the dance continued to be divided into Natya and Ritya on the one hand and Tandava and Lhasa on the other. And although they continued to follow the broad principles, each region had its own distinctive style and vocabulary, which also led to changes in the classical dance styles of India. Now, after understanding uh, these sources and its historical evolution, let us understand the role of language and literature. For example, Bharata has written his work almost 2000 years ago on the subject of dance, music and rheumatology that is considered to be the main bible or the text. Uh, however, Sanskrit was the prevalent spoken language and understood by all. So, we have lot of Sanskrit plays written by Bhasa, Kalidasa, Bhanubhut and others which are not just plays of spoken words but included Abhine and gesture language. The Natya Dharma, the mode of presentation, which is the rule to be followed in dance, in contrast to the Lok Dharmi, was very much there during the enactment of the play. So, after this, we have the beginning of the medieval period where most of the regional languages developed, which led to the growth of regional dance styles in different parts. However, uh, the contemporary classical dance styles be it Bharatnatyam, Kathakali, Manipuri or Odissi or Kathak can be traced back to the developments in the medieval period roughly dating from 1380 to 1800 AD. There was a revival in the interest of dance, uh, they developed pride in dancing which helped in the development and growth of various dance styles. And it was nurtured and practiced by artists and dancers through different time periods belonging to different regions. So, learners, we have understood that there were a lot of political developments, foreign invasions and changes which influenced the dance styles. Each style developed into a different system or tradition in different regions. The contribution made by the eminent artists, personalities and masters enabled the growth of these art forms. Though many of them lacked any formal education as far as dancing is concerned, but of course the concept of Guru Shishya Parampara was very much strongly part of the dance tradition. Learners, uh, dance during the Mughal period was uh, well developed under the patronage of Akbar. Akbar patronage was such that he promoted number of uh, traditions which led to an amalgamation of Hindu and Muslim traditions, gave birth to an integrated sophisticated Indo-Islamic art and culture. Akbar was a learned person and probably his library consisted of, of over 24,000 volumes written in Sanskrit, Persian, Greek, Latin and Arabic. Numerous artists, poets, musicians, dancers, calligraphers and craftsmen were part of his court. According to uh, the text Aini Akbari, a 16th century detailed document written by Abul Fall, there was a famous Kathak dancer in his court, 
Therefore, the period beginning from the reign of Emperor Akbar up to the end of the rule of Shah Jahan is known as the later medieval uh, period where we find that there was a lot of uh, development of fine arts, development of new forms of music. This led to the changes and development of a new dance form called Kathak. In various provinces of India, dance styles were developed. In southern India, the environment for dancing continued to be classical and spiritual. Various dance mudras can be found in the scripture tradition. During this period belonging to Vijayanagara kingdom, Krishna Devaraya had set up a special fund for the dancers. The dancers uh, were many of them were Devdasis and the dance forms that were promoted were basically Bharatnatyam. So, we find that on the one hand during this time we had the Mughals who promoted um, Kathak with the Lucknow Gharana was founded and in the southern India the traditional system continued. Now, let us move to dance during the British period. Uh, with the advent of the British period, there was a lot of influence of western culture on Indian culture. This age can also be called as a renaissance of cultural consciousness. As Europeans used to spare their time, they used to listen and watch Indian music and dance performers. Number of literary activities were also undertaken which led to a kind of an interest of European scholars. They got attracted towards Indian music and dance. So, we had uh, emergence of artists of international repute such as Ragini Devi or Shrimati Rukmani Devi or Minakshi Sundaram Pele or Shri Uday Shankar who performed overseas and made Indian classical dance and music internationally recognized. So, we can conclude that during European age, Indian dance was again revitalized. In the post-independent era, Indian dance became again popular among masses. Uh, in major cities of the country, uh, we have now dance schools and dance is also introduced as a subject in universities. In the post-independent period, there have been considerable changes in Indian dance classical style with regard to its presentation, makeup, dress, use of musical instruments, lights and sounds. We have number of books which are written both in Hindi and English and other languages on Indian dances. In 1954, Sangeet Natak Academy was set up by the central government which has made considerable contribution towards preservation and development of traditions concerning music, dance and drama. This academy organizes many programs, provides financial support to the artists and even honor them. Many Indian artists go abroad to perform through the various counseling and support services of the academy. So, learners, we have studied in this video that today Indian dance has entered the home of common man and this art has achieved a lot of recognition in the society. People belonging to all classes feel a sense of pride in learning classical dances. Our government is also playing an active role in encouraging classical dances. Today, it is not only a symbolic expression of religious ideas, but it has a close relationship in terms of its secular character and is popular among all age groups in India. Thank you.